KBYP with nothing going on in 40 meters, just had a nice close-in rag shoot for about 40 minutes on CW, but band's otherwise pretty flat. So, time to talk about more antenna theory. Antennas and transmission lines, part 11, I believe it is. Oh, there's somebody. Mass confusion leading to the gross, gross, horrifyingly gross error of something called NVIS, near vertical instance skywave, which does exist. It, energy does go up, but there's no such thing as NVISRP or NVIS reflected propagation, which is what the myth claims. This myth is, as far as I can tell, based on the fallacy that the energy comes off an antenna wire and bounces off the ground and goes up, and thus the energy goes up and that's responsible for close-in communications. Complete and utter fabrication and utterly false. There are two, I can't really say kinds of, I mean, there are two kinds of fields, E and M, electrical and magnetic, but there are two embodiments of them, if you will. There's two kinds of those kinds. The fields associated with the dipole arm, if I shouldn't, as I showed in the previous videos, are such that that's an electrical field line. Right there. And view of the wire, field line goes down to ground. I've been outside with a classical, good old-fashioned, cheap field strength meter, little pull-out antenna, and been out measuring. You can just see the cord up in the arm there, the 20-meter dipole. That dipole has, for some reason, it seems to have extreme directionality, and dipoles do not do that and cannot do that, but there it is, and it does it. And I got to beg and plead at 150 watts to contact South America on that antenna in that location where I can stomp Europe with a watt CW. Good luck explaining it, as Ricky Ricardo would say. Talk to an engineer. How do I test this? He said, well, for starters, just get a field strength meter. I got one of those. Cheap ham fest fine for five bucks. Actually, I got this for free. This was in an estate. I took it out, pulled the antenna, and put it under the, the dipole feed point here. And to my shock and amazement, nothing. When I went out to the end with one watt transmit power, there was a, a spike in the fields right here. And I would orient the meter. The higher I would hold it, closer to the antenna, the stronger the reading. And I had to orient the meter so the antenna was straight in line with the antenna wire. That is a field of the antenna. That is not radiated. If it goes anywhere, it may go traveling back and forth and might, in a mismatch, go back down the transmission line. But that, that's part of the antenna. There's, if this is moving, there'll be magnetic field lines also. And this is usual representation of an EM field traveling through space. There's some vector direction is traveling and it swaps in theory, back and forth between electrical and magnetic back and forth. And I guess they're supposed to be 90 degrees apart physically. But that's traveling through space doing this. That's the usual mechanical representation. This is apparently what it is after it's emitted from the antenna, not before. The, the, these are called near fields, N-E-A-R, because they are near the antenna. And in antenna testing, generally reckoned to be within one wavelength. There is no energy coming off that wire and reflecting off the ground and going up. Doesn't work that way. Is there energy going up? Well, under electromagnetic theory, no. If there's nothing above the antenna, there are no fields up there. Now, after what appears to be a collision mechanism I've talked about in previous videos, then there is emission, and who knows where that's going. It's going to go someplace depending on the antenna. But that the, 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 these fields here, at least, are not a basis for anything going up and being NVIS. These fields, E field coming down and the M field wrapping up around, are conserved to the antenna. What we'd associate with the circuit uh, components of inductors and capacitors 
that this is after emission with this whatever it is traveling through space, and those are not the same. This can go up, of course. It can go most any direction. This can reflect off plane surfaces. There are laws of physics that describe that. There are publications you can find on Google that talk about that. But the two aren't the same. That's only been about five minutes. That's not nearly as much fun. I'm not used a piece of paper here, so let's go on to some antenna testing that I did with a 20 meter dipole that kind of blew my theories out of the water. The videos here on transmission lines and antennas I have are theory. Now I'm getting into measurement because I got to prove why it is that I can work Europe with that antenna with one watt but no place else. Because again, dipoles can't do that. I took field strength meter out to the feed point where I was absolutely certain I was going to see a spike in the reading and there was nothing measured at one watt. No big surprise, one watt is 17 volts. That isn't much voltage to induce a field from a wire 17 feet to the ground. What I found was a significant peak at each end of the wire that dropped off quickly past the end of the wire and rolled off as it went back towards the feed point. But this kind of represents the signal reaching closer to the ground, perhaps, and being stronger. It was the strongest just, bit, just before the end of the arm on each end. I did not expect that. And I suggested that these arms are transmission lines and there's reflection at the end. And if there is, and it's a total reflection, then that might mean emission at the ends and not the feed point. What I want is emission at the feed point for several reasons. I don't know if that's possible in this context with a, with a gross discontinuity at the end, because in classical transmission line and antenna theory, there's a gross mismatch at the feed point. There's also radiation at the feed point. So it's possible there are two spikes or two planes of emission off the ends of these arms. If, if that's what it is, that's what it is, but that's not what I want. And what I want to know is how to get what I want. If this is working in Europe with a watt, what more could there be to want? Well, what I want is some way to steer this thing. And I'm not quite sure how to get there. At one watt, I only made measurements, only measured field at the ends of the arms. At 30 watts, to get more signal, obviously, I want to try to go out and try to measure some, perhaps some far field. I got what I also didn't expect. I got pretty much nothing at the ends, and the maximum field, I assume E field between the wire and ground, was maximum in the center of the wire. Now, you explain that, Lucy, because at the moment I can't. Why would it move just because of a different power level? I was able also, strangely enough, to be able to go, I'm looking towards the tree with the antenna between the tree and I, so if I walk past the antenna underneath, go over to the tree, I was able to measure field beginning about here and coming out, but no fields between the antenna and the tree where I was certain there was going to be coupling. If, if there's a, a voltage there on those lines and that tree is a dielectric and coupled to the ground, there ought to be fields there. But I basically didn't measure anything. So this has thrown a serious monkey wrench in my theories. And guess what, folks? That's real life. Most of science is spent chasing errors. We have theories, we make measurements, we, we predict things, and we get our heads handed to us on a platter, and then science and observations tries to straighten us out. And uh, I'm no different than anyone else. It's, it's not a failed experiment, it's just an experiment we didn't plan. So now I face the common problem with trying to monkey with HF antennas, how to get up here above the antenna without seriously messing the fields up because just my walking under the antenna screws the fields up badly because I'm a six foot tall big dielectric body bringing the ground up closer to the antenna. So it's quite possible these spikes are because of me being under the antenna. There, there are, are simple ways to get around that problem. Put a little, maybe a little thing on the ground here that moves along a rope and put the meter under there and just pull the meter across. So they're, they're using uh, UAVs or drones these days with uh, field strength measuring and transmitting equipment to fly around AM broadcast towers. So technology is out there to do that. I just don't know a great deal about it yet. So I'm in the process of trying to learn about that.
So there it is. Enjoy KBYP dip dip. <laughs>